Hello, I'm Darren Friedel, and like you, I'm wild about Washington. Two Mason County small farms have earned salmon safe certification for their farming practices. It has been the goal of these two farmers to produce healthy food on their land while allowing other healthy food to be produced in nearby streams. I am a certified organic farm with the state of Washington. Some of the requirements for the salmon safe farm are similar to the requirements for being certified organic in the state of Washington. That would include reducing runoff on your land, reducing erosion on your land, and uh, making sure that you don't use any chemicals or pesticides or fertilizers that would have a chemical content that might be harsh to the soil and to the water. Along with that, the Salmon Safe certification includes monitoring your water a little more closely than the organic certification. So when the Salmon Safe certifiers came, they asked me how many gallons of water was I using on the orchard or in the vegetable area when I'm raising vegetable crops. And what I do there is a drip system that greatly reduces the amount of water that I need to use uh, during the summer for raising crops. I also mulch, which is making sure that the soil is covered all the time with some kind of material, whether it's a growing crop or a mulch from manure or straw. That reduces the evaporation and therefore I need to use less water. One of the other things that they are very interested in is how I utilize manure on the farm. Since I have cattle, I have goats, <clears throat> and I have chickens, the manure builds up somewhat. I use the manure in several ways. I compost it which is, again, one of the same things that you'd use in organic certification. But I also uh, have swales, which are kind of like hedgerow, blueberry and blackberry bushes and other things that would be down, downhill from where my animals are, so that if there is manure runoff, this, the shrubbery will catch that, use that as a nutrient source. There won't be extra nutrient sources running further down the hill into either Hood Canal or into the stream in the back of my property. Part of the um, importance of the Salmon Safe de designation is to uh, alert the public that there are many farming practices that are, are okay with salmon and aren't really as harmful as maybe they've been portrayed in the past and I use mostly organic practices so that helps a lot with the salmon situation. I, I keep my work away from the streams and um, I cover crop and I use water in a, a minimal way and I raise goats and steers as well and I have some chickens. So I, I keep the numbers of animals that I have to a, a reasonable rate so that I'm not overproducing manures that might get in the stream. This farm has been in the family for 60 years or so and, and somebody needed to make sure that it continued to be used for agricultural pur purposes. I was really worried that it might get sold and developed. One of the advantages of having local farms in your community is that you get fresher food. One of the other advantages energy-wise is that your your tomato travels less miles to get to your plate when it comes from a local farm. And certainly in this day and age when the fuel resources are getting less and less, a tomato coming to you from a local farmer is going to be more valuable because it's fresh, but also because it's using less energy to get to your plate. Steelhead fishing on the Snake River in southeast Washington continues through the winter months. The WDFW Creel Survey continues as well to give anglers and fish managers constant information on the abundance of this popular resource. I'm the, uh, the lead steelhead biologist for our program here in Washington State. And one of my job responsibilities is to oversee our Creel Census program for summer steelhead. And I have to have the responsibility of sending out one to two people pretty much every day of the week for the summer steelhead season. And they go out to the various rivers, which includes uh, the Tushi River, the Walla Walla River, the Toucanon, uh, the Snake River with its borders, um, including the borders with Idaho. 
and they go out and they wander around and they find people that are fishing, um, either in the smaller tributaries or out in the main snake, and they interview them. Our creel samplers will take down some information as far as how long the fish is, uh, maybe sometimes they'll take some weights, and they also use a special code wire tag detector which they'll wave over the head of the, of the fish and um, will determine whether or not the fish has a code wire tag in it. At the time when those fish are implanted, the code wire tag itself is coded, so it lets us know where that fish may be released from and what time and all that kind of stuff. And it's just a really simple little code. Some of the information we get while our crew people are out uh, sampling people is uh, the number of anglers, how long they've been fishing, how many fish they caught. And we do a weekly summary every week that goes um, back out to certain people and we put it on our agency website and it kind of shows the different rivers that maybe people are fishing, how many people we interviewed and essentially how many fish per hour. And that's a good gauge for some fishermen to maybe make a decision that, well, I either want to go fishing here or I don't want to go fishing there. Now, the only downside is, is the information we get out is typically a week old and so people need to be a little a little aware of what's been going on. Maybe we've had some rains, maybe the rivers have blown out, maybe they're in really good fishing conditions versus the week before when maybe fishing wasn't that good. So um, that's some of the other information we put out. Uh, one of the things in, our, in recent years that's come up with our steelhead program is the recent listings of natural steelhead in the Snake River and other places as far as being listed under the Endangered Species Act and how our hatchery program may be affecting them. One of the things we've learned, especially through all these Code of Our Tag um, recoveries that we've gotten back, is our program here in Washington, at least in the Snake River, has been very successful in returning hatchery steelhead. Um, our hatchery steelhead over here in southeast Washington are all raised at um, Lions Ferry Fish Hatchery, and it's typically a one-year program where we spawn the fish in January or February each year, and then they're reared in the hatchery essentially until about the following March. So they have about a one-year life cycle within the hatchery. And then they'll go out to the ocean for one to two years um, based on the stocks that we currently use with about 70% coming back after one year in the ocean and the other 30 coming back after two years in the ocean. As you can see from some of the, the shots here, a lot of our uh, fishery takes place along the main stem of the Snake River, which um, being impounded by the, the four lower snake dams gives a, a fair amount of opportunity for people with disabilities that can't go walking down, say, a typical stream where they might normally would have fished for uh, steelhead and stuff. So this gives a real easy access point for a lot of people to, to go out and enjoy the, the great steelhead fishing we have over here in southeast Washington. Here are some fishing opportunities for the coming weeks. Wildlife biologists this fall continued to collect tissue samples from deer and elk harvested in the eastern region of the state. It is an ongoing program to keep Washington free of chronic wasting disease. Well, we're outside Colfax, Washington. Uh, we set up our first check station this year um, in a long time to check for CWD to take samples from deer hunters. We're working with uh, Wildlife Sciences, the veterinary division, to check in Region 1 because this area has been um, deemed as a higher probability for the entrance of CWD into the state since we border Idaho. Well, chronic wasting disease is a um, transmissible spongiform encephalopathy, and it's a brain disease that occurs in ungulates. And um, when the disease manifests itself, it um, creates kind of sponge-like holes in the brain 
and it's usually fatal to any of the animals that contract it. There's not been a documented case where a TSE has been transmitted from a wild ungulate to a human. It's similar to mad cow disease, and the only cases that we know where that has occurred is in Europe to date. We're also taking the opportunity to collect uh, teeth samples and uh, DNA samples for tissue from the deer so we can age them and get an idea of what the age class distribution is um, in this area. We're in the midst, an overlap area between both mule deer and white-tailed deer in the open Palouse uh, prairie country in Whitman County. And so we're getting uh, deer coming in from the breaks of the Snake River as well as from western Whitman County. Um, it's proven to be a pretty successful check station even though it hasn't been run in quite a few years. And I think we have almost 30 animals checked to date and we really weren't expecting that many because it seems like hunter participation is down in the area this opening weekend. When we check for CWD this year, we're also giving the hunter a card and we're um, labeling each sample with a barcode in order to try to process the samples a little quicker this, this year. And so the hunter can then look up on the internet the results of the CWD test after four to six weeks, find out whether it was positive or negative. But the thing for hunters to remember is, is that in testing over 2,000 deer in the past three years, we've never had a positive for CWD in the state of Washington. Here is where you will see some of Washington's wildlife. This has been Wild About Washington, brought to you by the employees of the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. Working together, we can keep Washington's outdoor heritage for future generations. Before leaving you, we want you to know that you can now purchase a license plate for your car with a color image of a bald eagle, an orca, elk, mule deer, or black bear. The additional license fee goes to the Department of Fish and Wildlife for the management of game animals, endangered species, and a watchable wildlife program. It's a good way to advertise your interest in wildlife and support the programs you care about. Besides, they'll look really good on your car. Thank you for watching and please join us again.